All right. Amen. I'm about to scream the throat out here. I am getting, getting, getting tired in here, amen. I'm going to take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 41. And uh, I'm going to say just a minute here before we go this into the scripture this evening. Uh, boy, our hearts have been blessed amen. by being here. We have not disappointed. Don't regret coming. I'm glad we did. Amen. Man, it's been refreshing to my, our souls. Amen. Thank you, preacher. Thank you. Uh, Miss Dawn, y'all you ladies, uh, thank you for putting up with these kids here for a couple of days. And uh, we're looking now for our youth rally coming up in four weeks. Hope to see all of you there. Um, today, I want to uh, leave you with a thought. I'm going to do different than I did last night. I'll leave you with a thought that will help you through life if you'll listen to it. Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. I understand this is God speaking to Israel and he's dealing in covenant with them. But I also understand you can take scripture and give it a spiritual application to a New Testament Christian and that's what I'm going to do. All right, uh, Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. You're going to need that. You're going to need that, boys. Amen. All you preachers, I appreciate everything that's been said about male masculinity. But we need it. Yeah. God yeah. knows we need it. When you turn a man eating lion in loose in most churches, he'd starve to death. Amen. Yeah. Uh, and I, and it's, it's a sad day that yeah. we live in. Yeah. Right. And God said, fear not, I'm with you. Amen. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Look at it, 13. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. I want to preach this evening on the subject, Holding Hands with God. Holding hands with God. The Bible says a lot about God's hands. A whole lot. The Bible talks about his hands being so great that he holds the, the world in his hand. And the Bible talks about his hands being so strong that they can make the world, but yet tender and loving enough to hold the hand of the youngest Christian and the child of God. When you're holding hands... Uh, it shows you're on the same team. Yeah. Like these kids playing Red Rover. You hold his hands, somebody, like this. We're all united and we're all working together. Amen. When you're holding hands, you're showing agreement. When you're holding hands, when a boy and girl, and they really start liking each other, what's the first thing you want to do? Hold hands. It shows a, a love, an attraction for that other person of holding their hand. The Lord looks at us today and he says, I... I'm going to hold your hand. You know, uh, back when I first got saved, there was a, a sort of a stupid old song come out, and it was kind of a real corny song, but it was real popular and had a little tune, and it said, uh, put your hand in the hand of the man that steals the water. Any old people in here ever heard that song? Uh, there's a few of them. Put your hand in the hand of the man that calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself, and you shall look at others differently. By putting your hand in the hand, and we laugh. I thought that's the dumbest sounding song, but you know, really, that that's there's a lot of truth in that. Yeah. When I got saved, I put my hand in His, yeah. and the Lord took mine. Yeah. He's held my hand all these many, yeah. many, oh, yeah. many, many years. And you young preachers, you're going to have to learn what it's like uh, to let God hold your hand, and there ain't nobody else around, and it's just you and Him. And there's going to be time. And boy, you, you grow. You know, when you grow as a young preacher, you grow when you're hurting, 
You grow when things are going bad. You don't ever grow when everything's going good for you. You go when everything blows up in your face. You grow when you're having it hard. You grow when your heart's broke. That's, that's what makes you grow. So I'm going to talk about that for just a little bit, a few minutes this evening, and, and, then, and then we're going to go. God's hands are big, and God said, I'll hold your hand. Now, to do this, I want to, uh, Frankie, where's he at? Sit him up here, Kelly. And uh, Frankie's going to help me here this evening. He don't really know uh, what I was going to do, but uh, I, saw, I said, I need you to help me, Frank. And uh, Frankie will help me illustrate this sermon today. And everybody here knows Frankie. Everybody in, in other countries, in other states know Frankie. Uh, if we have people come from Canada uh, down to our church. They said, where's Frankie? Uh, they, uh, they, they see me doing stuff like this on YouTube. But anyway, Frankie is my buddy. Me and him... Uh, do all kind of stuff together. We ride four-wheelers. We ride a four-wheeler up in the woods behind the house. We know where Peppa Pig lives inside of the house. We know. Ain't nobody knows that uh, but me and him. Uh, we, we work on stuff. We play basketball out in the yard. We ride the four-wheeler. Uh, we, and we, sometimes we make a tent. And we look at the star and count. And we can sit out in my bedroom window and count airplanes going across the sky, going from Asheville to Charlotte, uh, going there. And sometimes, sometimes we tell scary stories. And I can make up some scary stories, buddy, about green lizards coming out of Birdman's ears and stuff like that. And uh, uh, and and, uh, and we and we tell them, don't. We? All right, now Frankie is going to represent a Christian, and I'm going to represent the other. The Lord said, "I will hold." thy right hand. And then he said, God said, I'm going to use my right hand. So scripturally, it's like this. His right hand, my right hand. But for illustration purposes tonight, I'm just going to hold it like this and out of that. This is the Lord holding your hand. This is you. I will represent, sorry, I know, but I will represent him and and this is you and me having our hand hold. Number one, don't forget this. Number one, God is the one doing the holding. One of the greatest things you'll ever learn in your life is you ain't holding on to him. He's holding on to you. But when me and him's out in public and we're going places and all that, he thinks he's holding on. He ain't holding on. I'm the one doing the holding. And boy, if it, if a danger come like that, and I tighten it up like that right there, if he almost got out in front of a car or something like that, I don't say, now all right, now Frankie, we're going through the Christmas parade here and there's 10 million people here and, and we're going through here now. Now you hang on to me now, buddy. I'll see you on the, no, no. I'm the one doing the holding. I'm the one holding on. Now, I'm telling you that blessed old day, blessed happy day, happy day, happy day was the day I learned. I was like there just a second there now. I have see, just a happy day, happy day, happy day was the day it dawned on me that I couldn't hold on to him. Listen, I couldn't hold on to him till I got outside that door today. But thank God he's a holding on to me. Hey, somebody held my hand ever since I was 18 years old and I got saved. That big old hand has held me and guided me and protected me. God's the one doing the holding. You know, I have a, I, I, I travel a lot and I have been traveling, preaching revivals since I was 19. Revival me. I'm young, 100 years. And uh, I, I, I remember when I first started flying, I'd, I'd uh, go to them airplane, and I still do. I flew down to Florida not long ago. And got on. Now look, when I, go to that, when I go to that airport, I don't go down to that airport and go in line and then pull out uh, my ticket or whatever. You know, they all do it on their phone now, but I'm still, I'm still real. I, I, I avoid all that if I can. And I'll take a ticket and I put it down there, and they'll say, all right, Mr. Castle, you can go right in here. I go in there and sit down, and then a, minute, a lady comes on there and say, uh, flight 1784 to Fort Myers, Florida. We'll be boarding here shortly. We'll have, you know, have your passport, have your uh, boarding passes in hand, and we're all standing up there, and we go out in line. Go down some steps, and we go outside, and there's that big old airplane. Lord, have mercy that thing. How in the world them things get off the ground? It is, is a miracle. I mean, the wing that reached me here, the highway out there, just the wing. That'd be, it's just wide and reached me here, the highway. Now, I go out there, and I, I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't go out there and say, well, there she is. That big bird going to take me to Florida so I can preach. All right. It's going to Florida. I'm going to have to find me a place 
I, I, get, I, I get on that wing. I, down I get. I said, I'm going to have to find me a place where I know I can make it. And I get here and I just, I, I back down and I say, all right, I'm ready, Funzar. Yeah. Let's go. I, listen, brother, I wouldn't last we got out of the parking lot. It blew me across the road over yonder. honor. I can't hang on to that thing. I can't do it. I can't hang on. You couldn't hang on to Jesus from now till tomorrow morning. You'd get blowed off. You couldn't hang on to him. You know what I do? I walk on there, brother, and I hand him my ticket. I go in there, sit down, open my Bible, bow my head and pray, and I leave the flying up to the pilot, and I sit there and enjoy the ride. And I'm telling you, it's him. I'm not holding on to him. Thank God he's holding on to me. Amen. He ain't going to let go. He ain't going to let go. He never lets go. He never lets go. Listen, I wouldn't let go of Frankie. If we, was, I mean, we was in the middle of New York City, I'd grab him. I'd hold him. Oh, my, my, it wouldn't matter come what may. Brother, I, you say, well, Brother Danny, what if he gets cold? I got him. You say, Brother Danny, what if traffic comes? We'll go fast. Come on, Frank. I, well, uh, I, I, if this happens, we'll go fast. If that happens, we'll go slow. If this happens, we'll go over here. If a big a booger man comes out, we'll do like this. I'm not, I'm not letting him hold me. I'm holding on to him. Amen. And I ain't letting go. All you mamas in here tonight, you're seeing, you know that? You're holding on to them little boys. You're holding on to them little girls. And ain't nothing going to come between you and them. You'll hold on and there's nothing will come between him. He said, no man's going to pluck you out of my hand. His hand is bigger than mine. And thank God he'll never let you go. If it could have happened, it'd have happened a long time ago, brother. I'm telling you, he ain't gonna let go. I'm, but listen, you hear me? Listen, Michael Phelps will drown in the bathtub uh, before he lets go of my hand. Amen? Amen. It ain't gonna happen, brother. Lady Doo will teach Sunday school and speak in tongues uh, before they'll ever have a time when Jesus will let go of my hand. Hallelujah, brother. Amen. Dojo Cat, whatever her fool name is, will burn her Ouija board and throw her satanic clothes away and, and get right with God before he lets go of my hand. Bill Gates will sit out Walmart with a need help sign like this begging for food before Jesus lets go of Brother Danny. Elon, Elon Musk fell a kindergarten ABC test uh, before there'll ever be a time when he lets go of me. LeBron James will salute the flag, brother, and stand and honor his country uh, before the Lord ever lets go of me. Kim Kim Kardashian will put on an honest, good-looking, uh, modest dress, take all her makeup off, and she can't wipe the walls with her eyelashes before he ever lets go of my hand. It'll never happen. Hallelujah, brother. Donald Trump will have an affair with Hillary, brother, before he lets go of me. That ain't gonna happen. That will never happen, I promise you that. Hey, brother, brother I tell you what, brother, I, 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 the Tar Heels will win. I better shut up right there. Uh, before, he'll never let go of me. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Taylor Swift, brother, brother, will work at McDonald's. Jelly Roll will be anorexic. I, and, and listen, all this stuff will happen now. There he is right there. I said, I'm just kidding. Duck Dynasty will, uh, will roll at the red carpet and London and fashion show before Jesus ever lets go of me. I tell you, the brethren might let go. Listen, there's a lot of people would spit on me if I was on fire. They wouldn't give you a dime for me. Oh, there you go. I'm going to tell you something. I have a friend. Oh, such a friend that never has let go of my head. He's been with me through the hard time, through the good time, and going to God, he'll never let go. Never let go. Never let go. He's the one doing the holy. I'm telling you something, brother. Listen, you know, you hear, you hear me what? That means his protection. His protection. Come on, Frank. Me and him. First time in a while, you got to set up here and look how them people act. It's a blessing. I like looking at them. And you know what? Sometimes it gets scary. And there's a wreck on the interstate. And there's blood and people, maybe people shooting or something like that. I'm not going to let go of him. Yeah. Hold, his hand represents protection. Yeah. You know, there ain't no telling how many times God's protected you and you didn't even know he's protecting you. Amen. 
You know, we almost get killed or something. We say, boy, the Lord sure protected me. Well, all of them time, nothing bad didn't happen. And you got to church and with no, no almost getting killed. I mean, think about it. The boys asked me a story. They've asked me, I don't know how many times, to tell them this story. Sit down here. And I hadn't, hadn't yet, probably hadn't in 10 years. But I'll never forget the time. And I can tell you a bunch of these kind of stories. When we were building the building up there at New Manor, most, many of you have seen the building, the, the auditorium there. We were building that building. I, I drew that thing at a preacher's house sitting in Michigan on paper with scale, little bitty squares. And it's, it goes 80 feet that way and 112 that way, the main auditorium. We ordered wooden trusses to go on top of that building and they were the largest trusses that that company had ever made. They sent a, a, a crew up from Greensboro somewhere taking pictures of them because they'd never made an 80 foot, that's a long span for a wooden truss, isn't it? 80 foot is a long, two by 12s, two by, two by six, they weighed 500 pounds each. 56 of them. So if it's 112, it'd be 56. Every, I talked them into going on the two foot centers to try to save money, whatever, 24 inches instead of 18. And uh, I said, let's do two. Well, anyway, 56 of them will have 112 feet. That's 56 times 500 pounds. That's 25, 250,000 probably, something like that. Whatever, whatever 56, that's close to that. And that's a lot of weight. 12 inches, about three times as high as that ceiling right there. And I'd go up and preach somewhere. And you know, we was always in a building program, always building something. And I'd come home from church, and I'd say, right, what would you get done? About 11 o'clock at night, and I'd pull the car in there and shine the headlights in. Say, well, they got that done. They got that done. They got that done. They got that done. And the walls, them blocks, got laid. We laid them blocks straight like this. It's because we got the idea from them, them hotels over in Gatlinburg. They're not staggered. They look a little nicer like that. And uh, they, I, I remember going up and the wall was, I don't know, 20, about 20 feet high, like the big old square, and I could not wait for them trusses to be up there. Well, sure as a nut, world, the day, the day came, about this time of year, early March, they came, and they put them on a great big huge truck, and we had to rent a crane, and that crane, got, they, they strapped him thing on that crane and up uh, went one of them big old trusses. I and mean, it was wobbling like this, you know. And they set that first one. And I stood there and I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. It looks like a building. And then here come the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. 56 of them. And they put a few two before them there all the way across that building. It was early on. I was so thrilled. I said, hallelujah. Hey, man. That was on up, like during that weekend, on Monday morning. I went up there early that day. Nobody was in there working. And there was an electrician up on that wall, way up on top, putting in some wires, and nobody else inside there. And Carrie, you probably, I don't know, I know you remember. I don't remember how old she was. She was a lot, lot young. And, and I remember... Well, I walked in there. That day the wind was blowing. And when I come in there, the wind, you could see little little whirlwinds like this. I'm wondering about stuff like that now. And it goes, whoosh, 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 like that. And my daddy was back out there in the parking lot looking at stuff. He was back what would have, is now a parking lot. Wasn't nothing but a old dirt pile. And I was standing there, there and I walked in that building that day. And I remember looking up and I thought, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That March wind was whipping and I heard something pop. And it went, pow! And them things started snapping like, like you'd snap toothpicks. And I looked up and they started popping over like dominoes falling. And I don't know, for some, I took off running. I'd run as hard as I could. I jumped out and fell in the, in the mud and they crashed in behind me. It wasn't, it would, couldn't have been two seconds. 500 pounds each crashing down on me. I, I fell down. I looked back. My daddy is out in the parking lot just shaking his head like this. People started coming from everywhere. Here come the cops. 
here come the, uh, and I started crying. And I said, I said, God, God, why did this have to happen? And I mean, God, what? And then they said, Danny, how'd you get out of there? I said, I don't know. They said, how did you know to run that way? I said, I don't know. I know now. Yeah. It's like if something was falling on him, I'd grab him and say, let's get out of here. I believe the Lord reached down and just jerked me out and pulled me up. If I'd have went the other way, I'd have never lived. You know, you've heard everybody say, Lord, if I ever come to church, the roof would fall in. I'm the only person that that's ever really happened to. (laughs) It's it's true. It's true. If the newspaper showed up, Reverend Castle, uh, Reverend Castle, why do you think, they're trying to get me to say the devil did it. Uh, Why do you think this happened? I said, I don't know why it happened. Get out of here. You're getting on my nerves. I didn't say that. But I, and they said, but why do you treat it? I said, I don't know why it happened. I reckon they didn't brace them enough or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I've seen that. I like that. Now, that, that is a picture. That's a picture of what literally happened, of what spiritually happened. Yep. Yeah. Millions of times. I've drove millions of miles, literally millions. I mean, you put 100,000 miles on a car, 10 cars, you got a million. And I've had way more than 10, way more, 20. I drove two, 2 million miles. You, <laughs> One three old, he's out, he's three old, ain't he? And, and, uh, I mean, he, he's out there. and I said, I said, glory to God, he, he took care of me. He took care of me. And then I think of all the times the tractor and trailer had almost come over on me like that. And somehow or another I get through. I thought about the times I'd be so sleepy driving home. I could not hold my Lord, I've had visions and hallucinating and everything. I, I didn't know. I one night I dreamed I seen this real skinny hitchhiker. Or I, I thought I was, I was driving. I said, that's the skinniest guy I've ever seen in my life. And it was a sign. I said, whoa, time to pop, pull over here. And I'm going to kill you, fool self. I, I mean, I, and I've seen, I've seen stuff like that happen over and over and over and over. I'm telling you, I like the old song that said, put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Hand in hand, we walk each day. Hand in hand, along the way. Walking thus I cannot stray Hand in hand with Jesus Hey, you ain't gonna get too far away from him Holding hands We ain't gonna get too far away holding hands People say, I've just got a long way away from the Lord You can't get, you can't get that far That far you, you hold hands with the Lord You can't get very far It represents his protection it represents his affection. Yeah. Yep. His, you know what? If Frankie, if he falls down, I'm going to get him up. Amen. If he bloodies his arm, I'm going to wipe it off. Tell him not to worry about it. If he, if he falls and gets hurt, I'm going to pick him up and dust him off. If he, if he uh, needs to blow his nose, I'll, I'll get him a snot rag and we'll let him blow his nose. Listen, brother, it represents his affection. So down there just a second. Years ago, I took two of my daughters, her uh, back there, and my middle daughter, she's the youngest one. She just turned 20, 22. And uh, uh, Dax is 18. She's 20, that's right. 20, she'll be 23. And, she, uh, and I remember we took her and Carissa, the middle one, to Germany on a mission trip. I was going to go to Germany and preach, and I was going to be the guest preacher, and I did, and I preached, or I, who in the world won't hear me? They can't understand me in Michigan, I, I, let alone Germany. And, uh, they, and, and we, we, I had to preach to an interpreter, and we took them. Well, they got the flu. And Car- I, think, I think she had it first, and barely got over the flu, and as soon as we got on the airplane, Carissa got the flu. I don't know if you've ever been on an airplane with about a, how old is she, six, five, seven, seven, maybe seven years old, with a seven-year-old on a nine-hour flight with a flu. Throw up, kinds, headache, sore throat, flu. Well, we got on there and she was sick as a dog. We couldn't get off then. She said, Daddy, Daddy, I ain't gonna, it's easy, that's why I slick. I'll let you know if it's really coming. She said, Daddy, I said, honey, you feel like you're going to throw up? She said, 
I said, honey, I looked around. You know, in them airplanes, they give you a barf bag. It's up there. You're supposed to pull it down and all that. I didn't, I didn't even know that then. I, I didn't have one. Well, here it come. My little girl, seven years old. I said, honey, you going to throw up? She said, yeah. Now, look, I got a strong stomach. I can find a hair in my food, lay it over here, and keep eating. It don't bother me a bit. I can see guts on the highway, yeah. but there's one thing I cannot stand, and that's puke. I can't stand it. I'm telling you, I, I, would, I cannot stand to be in the same room with, with throw up. I can't, it's horrible. And I was sitting there, and here it come. I said, honey, you going to go? She said, Wah! and I, I did. Brother, Brother Ronnie, I took my hands and held it like that. Caught my little girl's puke. I did. I did. And there's people here. Some old woman sitting over here going, I want to smack her. I started throwing at her. I, I, she, looked, she looked at me like, oh, can't you do something? That's ah, none of your business. That's my little girl. If she wants to puke my head, shut up, you old witch. And I did it. But I did. And I was real nice about it. And I held her in my hand. I held that vomit. And I went and got it all cleaned up. And I cleaned it up. I didn't care what nobody thought. It didn't matter what nobody thought. Well, I thought about that. Lord, have mercy, y'all. You know what I've done? You know what I've done? I puked in the Lord's hands. And you have too. You have too. Ain't it bad? And my buddy, he holds his hands out there and catches that and he dares anybody to say anything to us. He said, that's my youngin. You shut up and leave him alone. I'll deal with him. Glory to God, brother. I threw up in his hand and he wiped it off and cleaned me up and nobody else would do that with him. I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't have done that if it had been anybody else. If it had been anybody else's kid, I just went, Looked over there, I got up and walked off. But she's my kid. She's my kid. It represents his affection. Amen. And then it represents his fellowship. It represents his fellowship. It represents him holding on to us when we can't hold on to him. When angels came and get Lot and his daughters out of Sodom, he said, you better get out of here, the Lord's going to destroy it. You better get out of here, the Lord's going to destroy it. You know what the Bible said? Angel reached and grabbed their hand. Yeah. So you're getting out of here whether you like it or not. Yeah. Come, Frank. Well, yeah, here's the way he does at Walmart. Daddy, can I go look at the toys? Most of the time, I say, Frank, we've got to hurry. Let's go. All right, the toys is over there, okay? The toys is right over there. You go try to look at the toys. Go try to look at the toys. Frankie, come on. Come on, go try to look at the toys. Frankie, you do it a lot harder than that in real life. Uh, I, now, I, you try to go look at the toys. Uh, old Hunter there, he's got, he's got all kind of toys. You go over there and try to get them. And I say, Frankie, come on, we got to go. Come, Frank, Frankie, come on. And I, now, you fight me, Frank. You try to go that way. You try to go that way. You know, have you ever seen a woman go and some little kid just a bouncing like that? And she's, she's just walking down there like that. That kid's going bam, bam, bam. That's a picture of some of y'all. That's a picture. You fight and you kick and you yeah. scream and the Lord's taking you right on into heaven yeah. uh, just like he promised. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. There's a lot of you going to go kicking and screaming, but you're going, amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're a bucking the whole time, but you're going hand in hand. We walk each day hand in hand. And we look along the way, walking thus I cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus. I tell you this evening, it represents his affection. It represents his fellowship. Yeah. Lastly, I'll say this now, hurry. I'm trying to get through early. Life never ends when you're holding hands with God. You see, one day, it's like God and Enoch in Genesis 5. The people don't believe the rapture don't understand Genesis 5. They teach Genesis 6 is a picture of Noah, Noah and his family going through the flood and they say, well, see right there, we're going through the tribulation. Noah and going through the flood is a picture of the Jewish remnant being preserved during the tribulation. There was a man who lived before Genesis 6 and that's Genesis 5 and his name was Enoch. And Enoch is a picture of somebody who lives on this earth and never does die. Amen. People say, well, he's got to come back and die. No, he don't. No, he don't. 
No, you said everybody has to die. No, they don't. If the Lord come back right now, we'd never die. Right? Some people die twice. That Hebrews 9, 27, not a doctrinal statement that means everybody in the world has to die. That, unless God makes an exception, we're all going to die. Lazarus died twice. The widow of Nain's son died twice. Dorcas died twice. All those people in the Bible that raised the dead died again. Enoch never died at all. So he went walking with the Lord. The Bible said Enoch and God walked. And he walked and said, what do you think about them mountains over there? Enoch said, man, it was cool. Oh, I like them. Well, Enoch, what do you think about them ocean stuff I made? And we walked. We walked and walked. And one day, the old preacher said they got out there so far that God said, Enoch, and we're about as close to my house as we are yours. Won't you just go home and meet tonight? And he took one step and went, and he's still up there. He didn't tell him, there ain't no night there. He's still spending that same day with the Lord right now. Life never ends. Listen, when you got saved, God got a hold of you, and he ain't going to let go. You can kick, you can scream, you can rebel, you can act stupid, you can do all kind of dumb things. He's not going to let go of you. He is not going to let go of you. Listen, you hear me? They said, uh, when I, it comes time for me to leave this world, if I do, if I have to leave this world by death, if I do, I don't know, nobody knows, but I'm telling you one thing. I'll quote the old song, death's chilly waters, I'll soon be crossing his hand will lead me safe or I'll join the chorus in that great city and live with him forever, evermore. Hallelujah, people. Hallelujah, brother. I'm telling you, not life never ends when you're holding hands with God. I'll tell you this story. This old, old man one time lived for the Lord his whole life. And lived for the Lord his whole life and uh, he's, he's bad off. He's on his deathbed. Just had a few days to live. And this preacher come to visit him. And the preacher come in. He said, how you doing there, fella? He said, I'm, I ain't going to be here much longer, preacher. He said, I just thought I'd come by and pray with you. And there's a chair sitting right there. And there's another chair sitting over on the other side. And the preacher started to sit down in that chair. And he said, no, 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 don't sit there. He said, oh, okay, why, why not? He said, do you mind sitting over here? Preacher said, no. He said, that's Jesus' seat. He said, huh? He said, that's where Jesus sits, preacher. He said, every day he comes in here and sits with me. Me and him talk. And the preacher said, whoa. So he sat down over here. He went and prayed with that guy, and he left. And he said about two weeks later, he saw that old guy's daughter at the store somewhere, and he said, how's your daddy? She said, preacher, he's gone. He's gone. Just a couple of days after he was there, he went home to be the Lord. Preacher, oh, I'm glad. To, I mean, I'm sad to hear that. I'm, I'm happy for him, but I'm, I'm sad for him. She said, no, no, good night. Don't be sad. She said, you know that chair where he always said Jesus sat every day? And he, he said, yeah, I sure do. He told me not to sit there because that's where Jesus sat. She said, the day we went in there and found my daddy a corpse. The day we come in and found his body stiff where he'd left this world, they said daddy's head was turned like this and his hand was right there on that chair. And they said, that's the way we found my daddy. And it's like the Lord said, all right, Pop, you ready to go? And he stuck out his hand and said, yes, Lord. And he went from this world right on in yeah. to the next. Death's chilly waters I'll soon be crossing. His hand will lead me. Yeah. Say for I'll join that chorus in that great city and live up there forever. What about this? I'm trusting to the unseen hand Amen. that guides me through this weary land and some sweet day I'll reach that strand still guided by that unseen hand.